welcome to the Landshuter Hochzeit and the best wedding festival celebration in the world. The year is 1475, and the brightly painted streets of the beautiful Bavarian township of Landshut are practically boiling over with excitement and anticipation for today. The day of Princess Hedwig and Prince George's wedding, a grand affair meticulously documented down to the finest detail, and though no one knows it yet, their glorious celebration, a night no one wanted to end, won't. Because this medieval wedding festival is still going on to this day, and you are invited to attend. Held every four years over the course of three weekends, Landshut puts on a massive festival festival, complete with the legendary wedding parade, tournament jousting, and so much more. Some events, like the parade, seem to require tickets, and to secure our place we booked months in advance. But truth be told, no matter how much we researched online, or how many other videos we watched, Camille and I just could not get a good reading on what to actually expect. So I think that means it's time for another classic near-from-home day trip with a time machine, only one train away, specifically the RE25 to Prague. Stopping in Landshut, our journey back to the Middle Ages should only take about 45 minutes. That was an incredibly lovely and quick ride. Though I'm not going to lie to you guys, the temptation was there to just stay all the way to Prague. I love Prague. Watch our videos if you haven't seen them already. They're fantastic. But anyway, I'm happy to be here in Lensut, and I'm happy to celebrate a wedding. So let's get into town. Bye, train. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Landshut Hauptbahnhof is not right by the center town. You've got a little bit of a walk. That's where everyone else is going. Can't be far. Okay, some lessons learned the hard way. What was only seconds for you has been about 20 minutes of walking for me, mostly along this rather busy and ugly main road. What I would recommend for you, wait and do the bus. You definitely can walk it. I don't really know if you get much benefit out of it though. But this is why we're here. Simply, all that's left is to cross the Isar and get into the old town. And what an old town Landshut has. The castle looming above, the grand church on the main street. This is gonna be a beautiful place. Oh wow. I think we might be in the right place. Now that we've made it to Landshut, well, what do we do? Unfortunately, I don't have a near from home to watch before I come to these places, so I must admit, I'm a little bit confused. From what I can tell online, this medieval festival will be nothing like the medieval festivals we've already been to, having the festival itself separated out into the Festplatz, because the main town itself is being used exclusively for the parade. We have tickets for that, it starts in about 20 minutes, so we need to find our seats. I haven't actually seen a map, so I don't know where we're supposed to go or where our seats are. However, when entering a medieval town for a medieval wedding, why not go through the medieval gate? That's what everyone else is doing. And like any good German town, is a bronze map. Absolutely fantastic. This is so busy. I had no idea, but I think we're in the right spot. There's plenty of standing room though, so I don't know if you need a seat per se, but I wouldn't mind a good sit down, guaranteed good views, and the best footage for you guys. Sit down before the parade starts. Sure to go. Now, before we fully immerse ourselves in a traditional German medieval royal wedding parade, and the things we do on this channel. Well, it would be helpful if we actually knew what everyone was going on about. I mean, it wouldn't be traditional if everyone was speaking English. 
So we're going to need to learn some German, and for that I want to thank this week's video sponsor, LingoPi. They are an online language learning platform with a really cool twist. You see, they want to use authentic German TV shows and movies to teach you the actual vocabulary you want to know and use, and not just the standard vocabulary that everyone gets in the textbooks. I'm sure anyone out there who has tried learning a language like myself has hit this exact wall. You're feeling pretty good about yourself, you're doing really well in your language school, your grammar's not bad, your listening's getting there, you decide to sit down and watch a television program only to realize that you cannot keep up because you never learned all of the hyper-specific words that they're using in that show. It's really demoralizing. I mean, when exactly are you supposed to learn all of the words about pigeons? You're not at least not in a traditional language school. But with LingoPi, you can. You see, they've built a really interesting online video player that takes the German language program that you're watching and puts a live ticker tape interactive subtitles on the right-hand side of the screen. It's really neat. And at any moment, you can scroll over because they are fully interactive, allowing you to click on any word and get it translated in real time. It'll even pause the video for you so it doesn't keep chugging along. This is so much nicer than what I used to to do, sitting at home, pausing the TV with a remote and opening up an online dictionary, it just keeps you in the moment. And of course, translating a word just once isn't that helpful, so the app will also create a custom set of flashcards for every video you watch so you can continue to review later and really put them into long-term memory. This actually allows you to watch through full programs that you otherwise wouldn't be able to keep up with and get that specific vocabulary that you're looking for. And I wasn't kidding about the pigeons. I literally watched a little German documentary about them earlier on LingoPi. I would have never been able to get through that video without their help, and it was so much more fun because of it. The vertical sentence-by-sentence -sentence subtitles are also just a nicer reading experience in my mind, and as you scroll around, you can click on any individual sentence to skip the video. It's just a really nice experience. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, you know the drill. Here's my link on screen right now in the description box below. Please use the link so they know you're coming from us, so they know this sponsorship was worth it. But if you're not quite sold, they do have a seven-day free trial at the moment that I would recommend anyone give a go. Thank you again to Lingo Pi. Now, back to the wedding. I am in awe from this festival by this parade. I mean, together, we've traveled to so many medieval festivals, authentic ones to boot, and we've made some amazing memories, but this, this has to be felt to be believed. You might be wondering though, rightly so, where my famous medieval hat from Breton has gone, or in fact, why no one in the audience is dressed up. And that's because we aren't allowed to. The goal here is true accuracy and authenticity down to the finest stitch. And us mere peasants from the 21st century simply wouldn't be peasanty enough. Everyone you see within this parade is part of the Landshut Wedding Preservation Society. To perform, you must audition, your outfit must be checked, and you must even live here in Landshut too. The women, and men especially, have all grown out their hair for months to match the period-specific styles typical of medieval Bavaria. In fact, as this wedding really was so meticulously documented, most people are actually playing specific characters. Nobles, bishops, aristocrats, tradesmen, and common folk who we know actually attended over 500 years ago. This gives the Landshuter Hochzeit a truly different air from any other festival we've gone to together. It's magical. Please keep the parade clear as the event
Now, though, as the parade comes to an end, let's try and beat the crowd over to the main festival grounds, back over by the river. Before we enter the main festival grounds, you do need to make sure that you have a ticket. They cost three euros 50 each, and even though I bought rather expensive seating tickets for the parade, I'm still not entitled to go in here without the dedicated ticket. It's not that expensive, so it's not a big deal, but I was a little shocked. Kind of thought my ticket would include a ticket to this. Oh well. Tables, danke! How cool is this? Am I about to say it? I think I am. This is the best fest plots I've ever been to. Medieval theme. Before we explore though, I recommend we get our food and drink done first. This place is gonna heat up massively any minute now, so let's get a place while we still can. Okay. It's a little bit complicated, but the food looks fantastic. There is a lot of food on offer, however, I decided to try something that, and this is kind of shocking after living here for four years, I've never had before the Halbmeter Wurst. I'm pretty excited. We had to go pick these up at the stands, food's everywhere around here, but beer is table service. You can tell where the priorities are. This looks aggressively stereotypical, no? The Landshuter Helles is really nice. That is a good beer. It's a little bit sweeter than what I'm used to in Munich. It's very subtly different. I've had quite a few masks in my day. I think I'm starting to be able to tell the difference a little bit. I feel like I'm culturally integrating. Let's see how it tastes. There's no dignified way of doing this. That's really good. Though it feels like I'm playing the flute while I eat it. It's absolutely delicious. I mean, it's a German sausage. Fantastic. Okay, so these kinds of festivals in Germany aren't great for vegetarians. Luckily, I'm a pescatarian, so I went with a Lachs-Semmel. A salmon sandwich. Oh yeah. <laughs> Eating on camera. Nothing more natural. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. I don't know how to describe it. It just tastes really good. It's really good salmon with some really tasty onions. I would recommend. This is so wildly different than all of the other medieval festivals we've gone to. Right off the start, you can tell 90% of this entire place is dedicated to one thing and one thing only, food and drink. Unlike so many of the other festivals that we've gone to, there aren't stalls selling all kinds of different wares or demonstrating different crafts. It's all just about good food and drink. Because frankly, this is just a giant medieval beer garden. And who could ask for more than that? The festival is really starting to pick up and I am peckish again. And while walking around, I saw the kind of meal I missed earlier and cannot leave without getting. The pizza. I don't know how you pronounce such a nonsense word. We've got a Bavarian Bretzen crust, Weisswurst topping and sweet mustard as well. It's a madness. Like if you photoshopped it and just made a joke about it, I'd laugh. You know, it's not bad. It's pretty good, actually. The sweet mustard really works on a pizza. I really wanted to make fun of this, but now I just really like it. I'm not even super hungry, I just had to try it. Man, did I call it or what? In just that one meal time, look at the place. It is packed. Oh, are they coming in right now? Oh, shit. We gotta go. And sort of continuing that theatrical production nature from earlier, they have these wooden fences separating us riffraff from the medieval era. It's a little strange, but it adds a pretty cool ambiance as you watch all of the medieval townsfolk, the peasants and nobles alike, go about their business. 
and a change I would have never expected. There's almost nothing in the way of shopping. It is 99% all good food and good drink. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I did really want to buy a bow and arrow this time. No way I'm going to be able to do justice with this on camera, but being out here in the meadow surrounded by all of the wooden shacks and that castle looming above, that's pretty incredible. I'd fight under those banners. The Landshuter Festplatz is also just a really lovely Festplatz, not tucked away near a main road or anything like that, but instead nestled between the Altstadt itself and the river. Fantastic location. The ducks are a little aggressive though. So I just wanted to talk to you guys for a second about the ticket situation because we're in Germany and it's not always as obvious as you might think. Back in February, I actually started researching this whole event and looking into what tickets to buy. And it turns out every weekend of the Landshut Hochzeit, there are a bunch of theatrical performances and musical productions in addition to the Ritter Turnier and the parade that we saw earlier. Now. The website was quite unclear as to what each event actually entailed. I knew that I wanted to buy tickets for at least one event, but I had a really hard time choosing because I was just kind of confused as to what I was spending my money on. At the end of the day, I obviously went with buying tickets for the Landshut Hochzeit Parade because it seemed like the thing to see. I am a little bit disappointed because I could have just spent that 100 euros on a different set of tickets for a different event. I was very interested in seeing the Ritterturnier but eventually decided not to buy tickets just because this was really adding up. If I could go back in time, I would definitely not buy tickets for the parade and do free standing room and buy tickets for the Richard Turnier because it's happening right now and it sounds so cool. Maybe in four years. Though there is, of course, one more thing that we can do because any good beer festival will have three things. Good beer, good benches, and somewhere for me to shoot a gun. Let's go play with crossbows. Responsibly. Hi. Servus. Servus. Okay, ja, cool. Alles klar, dann los geht's. Super. Hey! <laughs> cool. Did you get it? I can't really see. Maybe? Close enough I think that. You did. This is like the most fun part of any of these beer festivals. Though usually it's not with a crossbow. Okay. Yes, we cool. That wasn't too bad. I was worried that was gonna go way worse. I mean, I love a good shooting tent, and I usually do quite well in Oktoberfest, but that is with a very different weapon. I've never held a crossbow before. Though I have a feeling this might not be a medieval crossbow. I don't know if they come with sights. <laughs> and I need them. Well done. Ah, oh, very cool. Thank you very much. All right, when the German man running the stand says, not bad. <laughs> oh yeah, that's good. Why are you so good at these games? Couple beers, helps the aim. <laughs> don't tell the Americans. No, I think it's all the video games. <laughs> Oh, I'm pretty happy with that. Today has been absolutely spectacular. The Landshuter Hochzeit has surpassed any expectations I could have had for it. This has been wonderful. I was a little bit apprehensive this morning when coming to film this video because we've been to so many other medieval festivals how different could they be and would it become a little bit repetitive? But thankfully, not to worry, this has been so different from all the others and a fantastic addition to the collection. I hope you've enjoyed the video half as much as I've enjoyed making it. If so, like if you've liked it, comment your support for this kind of content and subscribe for more. If you're looking for something else to watch, then boy, do I have a playlist for you full of so many more fantastic German medieval festivals. And of course, I will see you in the next video wherever that might be.